Good evening, boys and girls. Welcome to a bonus episode of the Highbury Squad today. Um, it's two a days Tuesday. This is the first broadcast, and it's in celebration of International Women's Day. Let's go. Mind the gap between the train and the platform. Please stand clear of the discussion doors. The next stop is Highbury Squad. So I realised I played the um, the trailer with the song "Hello, Hello, We Are the Arsenal Boys." I'm asking the team to do a "Hello, Hello, We Are the Arsenal Women," so that could work really well as well. But regardless, we are the Arsenal men and women, and today is International Women's Day. And joining me once again is one of our show favourites, Mr. Demian Ariaga. Ah, thank you for that. I appreciate it. Boom, boom, boom. Squaddies, uh, what's up? <laughs> how you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? Thanks for having me, as yeah. always. Excellent. It's great uh, great to be here. Most people will be listening to this on replay, getting home from work, traveling from work, or either sleeping. It's not our usual broadcast hour, but because I'm traveling today, um, it was the best time to get this show done. And it didn't seem right for the show to go out tomorrow when today is International Women's Day. Demian, you have been such a massive supporter of women's sports um, causes, organizations. Um, we women, and you'll listen and everyone will hear some of the clips from some of these influential women in the beautiful game. Uh, Emma Hayes said it yesterday, was on Sky Sports News this morning about I want every day to be about women and et cetera, et cetera. But it is a day to take a beat and realize how far we've come. I, it's such an overwhelming day in general because of the good things related to, uh, obviously, International Women's Day. Also, it's a day to commemorate more than celebrate, if you ask some people. So overall, anything that brings more and more attention to women, to their causes, to equality, um, it, it's something that I'm all about and I respect and, and I hope that people also understand because I know there are some cynics out there uh, that imply that, you know, looking at women today, for example, and trying to build up this day uh, equals ignoring the trans community or ignoring minorities or ignoring, you know, refugees and so on and so forth. So it's one of those days that is tense for people, especially, you know, it, it reflects a lot of... Uh, toxic masculinity and and uh that's what we're here for to also try to battle and combat and i'm excited for that yeah definitely international women's day today being celebrated across the continents and the globe in a time where life isn't particularly easy um i mean for me personally you know we we don't talk politics on our show at all and i'm not here to talk about politics today but it is tough when you see men and women and their children being separated in this um, situation, this grave, horrific situation that the world finds itself in right now. Um, and so many men out there are such great supporters of women and, you know, seeing them stay in their homeland while they send their entire families off and they're separated. You know, we also have to be very grateful that, you know, today we can walk to the fridge and get a snack and, a Absolutely. bottle of water and um, not be too troubled, but in our hearts and souls, we truly are troubled. And for me, as an especially massive, uh, massive shout out to the women of Ukraine who are trying to hold their families down together, keep their children safe. And at the same time, you know, of course, be laden with fear, uh, Demian, with everything yeah. that is going on. It's it's truly overwhelming. And to that point, <laughs> you know, you see a lot of, of uh, people or men, you know, tweet pictures of, you know, good looking Ukrainian soldiers or w w female soldiers. That's not supporting women, by the way. This is sexualizing something that uh, shouldn't even I can't even believe that people think in, in those terms. But anyway, um, what you said is strikes a chord. I think it's very important for people to also realize that just because a cause or a group of people are affected that we don't belong to or it doesn't affect us directly, it's not like it's not our problem. The gay community needs the hetero community to help. Uh, the, the black community needs white 
community that helps and with the Asians and we need everybody needs to help the Latino community. So we just need to fight for the just just cause. Excuse my English. And uh, sometimes it's easier than others. Sometimes it's harder than others. But if you make an attempt, if you try, that's a world of difference. Don't be afraid to speak your voice, to send a tweet, to do whatever you have to do and you can for something that you believe in and it, the, the causes are worth it. They're always worth it. And Def definitely um, in yeah. this world of football um, with the, with women to this day in 2022 facing bigotry and facing uh, so much discrimination, it's, it's absolutely paramount that we all pull and, and not, and I always say this, it's not to get the women's game to the men's level because the men's level implies fighting violence like we saw in mexico it implies diving it implies corruption it implies a whole plethora of things so it's just the women game growing on its own yeah. as a whole and not necessarily being m matching the men's game that's my viewpoint anyway so yeah sorry definitely. for the monologue no 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 it's important and don juan we don't do politics on our show and i said that at the very beginning and we recognize this and what you're saying of course absolutely 100 percent and kevin and i mentioned this on a show just a few absolutely. days ago we do not talk about it all the time um we're here to celebrate women and we're here to recognize that women from all corners of the earth you know there's a woman in africa right now who's carrying a, a bottle of water on her head and has to walk 10 miles with a children on one side or the other, or right. there's a woman somewhere in the middle of this country where we live, um, who's still recovering from hurricane Katrina. Exactly. There are men and women everywhere who every single day, um, are finding and trying to overcome these adversities and struggles and our hearts and our respect goes out to each and every one of them. And you know what? We all have problems. Nobody, nobody's life is perfect. And so to be able to come on this platform and have an honest conversation about these things and hope that we're going to progress in racism, hope we're going to progress, you know, where, where religious um, conflict uh, is, is concerned. Hopefully we're going to uh, progress with the women's movement. Hopefully we're going to progress with things um, along the way. And here's a video from someone you all know, and who has definitely been a huge supporter of women to, to dovetail off what Demian's saying about men have to support women, women, men, etc. Here's someone we all know and love. Sophie and all the women connected with the Highbury squad, happy International Women's Day. You've, you're all making moves and marks in, in a wonderful sport of football and keep going. You're all exceptional women. There's a beautiful game that we all love and you're trailblazers in it. So this is a big up to all of you on International Women's Day. Take really good care, ladies. Enjoy your day. And do you know what? Keep striving, keep pushing. Keep pushing the envelope because the game isn't just for men. It's for women as well. It's for everyone. And uh, you guys are making such a fantastic difference. And uh, I personally appreciate you. And I'm sure many others appreciate your input, your vibrancy that you bring to the, to the game of football. So happy International Women's Day. Look after yourselves and take good care, whatever you do. I speak for football, but it's in life. So look after yourselves, ladies. Take good care. Super Kev Campbell. I love it when he says Super Kev Campbell, like I we don't that. know. <laughs> like we don't know. Yeah. Thank you. Who is that guy? Oh, okay. It's Who Kevin. is that guy? Super oh, Kevin. yeah, that's Thank Kevin. You. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, lovely message uh, from Super Kev there as well. Good evening, squaddies, by the way. I'm not sure if I even saluted you, but there you go. Better late than never. Lose my manners when Super Kev isn't in the house. And we just got stuck <laughs> right into this uh, today. We will be talking a little bit about um, uh, the women's team. Of course, we have Demi in here. And uh, we already had a question from Mo about um, the women's 108 unbeaten. Um, <laughs> uh, we'll get to that. We'll get to those uh, 108 unbeaten in, well, we lost to Birmingham. 
I don't know what he's talking about. I mean, yeah. he must be historically many years ago. Sure. Okay. Yeah. 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 That's, yeah. Uh, that's we've exactly... lost many games. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And remember the Barcelona game as well. Oh yeah. Though. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Let's uh, enjoy another video from one of our favorites. I'm sure you all remember Alison Bender does a lot of stuff for Chelsea uh, TV, among many other networks around the globe. Um, she is one of our show favourites. Here's a message from Alison Bender, broadcaster and journalist. Hi, everyone. Happy International Women's Day. And I just got a little message for you from someone who's worked in football for 20 years. I guess lessons I've learned along the way. Um, do not let your voices be drowned out. We need to hear from passionate female football fans. When I first started out, there were so few women in the game. And so I guess I tried to fit in, to blend in. We were held up against one another. We were competition, there was jealousy. And I wish I'd known then what I know now, that collaboration and raising each other up and developing a sisterhood is really important. So do that. When I teamed up with the girls um, at the Highbury squad, it was just brilliant to think that Chelsea fans and Arsenal fans could have such a great discussion and debate and i just think that is really important just reach out to everyone around you and do not let your voices be drowned out lovely message there from alison demian and uh, i've been talking football with her for uh, quite quite some time now and someone who really puts her thoughts out there and has uh fights the cause she's got um She's got a great series. Check her out, Ali Bender TV on Instagram. Uh, she's got a really cool interview coming up with Abby Wombach, um, right. which is real nice. So, yeah, I don't know if you've seen a lot of Alison's work, but she's definitely one to follow, everyone. I saw her a bunch when she was, I think, used to work for either NBC Sports or, mm -hmm. you know, when, when, when I think pre-Rebecca Lowe, I want to say, or something around that time. And she was always outstanding. I loved her interviews. Uh, I always thought she's a very good speaker. I love her diction. I love how her she's very eloquent, very intelligent. Yes. So I admire that. And, and, you know, I always say you've, you've heard me say this a million times. So but for people that don't quite comprehend this professional female footballers have achieved the impossible. They are making a living playing football in which is a sport that is predominantly male driven and macho and, and testosterone driven. And they have been able to just like Kevin said, be trailblazers. And that is part of the equation of this equality that they're striving toward. And I'm striving for them, but also people like you and other journalists like Allison and Laura Woods and all the people that we're going to see today. It's it's paramount to keep them uh, being heard and when somebody like allison says you know don't let your voice be drowned out well there are people actively drowning them out so if you're at least not going to propel them forward at least not be the voice that silences them and try to be as, as uh, respectful as and welcoming uh, to their opinion as possible because they're they matter as much as ours if not more so uh, i'm Very talking about cool. men in general yeah. Um, so I have one here. So uh, a, a lot of people will know. And thanks to everyone who's joining us this evening. Great message from Alison. Another one coming up here. Um, now, I have no idea, by the way, how to uh, download videos from Twitter. And I tried Neither to do it. Neither do I. Neither and, do I. And, you know, I, I couldn't do it. And so eventually I gave up because... <laughs> I was just, you know, going crazy, going nuts. But this is a very special message, and I'm going to play it from my Twitter account on my phone. Um, nice. Leanne Sanderson, who ah. is an absolute legend of the women's game and now breaking ba down barriers in the media yes. um, on TalkSport and Sky Sports News. Of course, she is an ex-Gooner as well, played for Chelsea. We will forgive her. For that one, um, Juventus and 50 caps for England as well. In a time, um, Demian, where the game really wasn't quite where it was and people like Alex Scott, Leanne Sanderson, the things that they've done for the game, real special. So let's listen to this message. I'll try and get it on camera too, um, but you guys will be able to hear it. Here we go. Very happy International Women's Day, everybody. It shouldn't only be today. We should celebrate women every single day. And I feel really blessed and lucky to be a former professional footballer, now currently working in the media. Never let anybody let you give up on your dreams. Tell you you can't do something. You can do anything you put your mind to, and I'm living proof of that. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Here's to us being unbelievable women all over the world. 
very happy International Women's Day. Wow. Love wow. that. Love oh, my goodness. <laughs> She's such an icon. And the the inter intersectionality of women in football, uh, it's just outstanding. Like, I get nervous, you know, when I don't play a symbol in the right, you know, place in a bar and music let alone you know b being a professional women footballer that's from you know black female fo it's just insane what these women are doing people like you have done I i'm just in awe every single day and it's never just commonplace for me it's just at just so worthy of, of admiration and respect and inspiration I'm so to be in the same space as you and allison and leanne and the other women i'm just like beyond myself so i i'm so thankful for you to let me be a part of this yeah of course and the um the leanne gets a lot of abuse online and it's has horrible. to deal with it it's horrible every single day and it's, it's does terrible, it terrible yeah does it um with a constant smile on her face and like for everybody sometimes it really she shares it because there are days where we all need a little bit of a boost no matter how successful we have been in our careers so the fact that she's so busy and she's um, she's kind of, uh, you know, doing so many things for different networks right now. She sent that video and I'm very, very grateful to her for sending the video and sharing a little bit of inspiration on in International Women's Day with us. Uh, yeah, of course, Jess from She Knows Arsenal always gets props. In fact, Jess um, was given one of her debuts on this show Um uh, when she was first starting out, as well as on Dan Potts' show uh, as well. We've been huge supporters of Jess. Um, Pippa Monique as well is another one um, who has done great things and given us all room to talk about football as well in, in different ways. There are a lot of female podcasters out there from Manchester United, Chelsea, Liverpool, um, I think there's a group called Her Too um, that is really good if you want to check that out. I know Little Soph is a huge follower of that um, group as well. So, yep, lots of good stuff. Right, let's play a couple more messages and then we'll get Demian's take on our team at the moment. Another one I'm so grateful for. Um, I have the absolute honor of appearing on her breakfast show um, uh, in the mornings on Talk Sport as a contributor. Uh, one of my favorites, a raw, real, down to earth woman for sure. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Natalie Sawyer. Happy International Women's Day, a day where we should champion those that have come before us and those that will walk in our shoes in the future. A future I hope will be fairer and more equal. And as much as we could talk about the need to do better and to do more in general, I think today's also a good time for us to self-reflect and to focus on ourselves and champion ourselves. So for International Women's Day, I think it's only right that we forget about the buzz about others. Don't compare yourself to anybody else because you are you and you are the beautiful you that you are. So be bold, be brave, believe in yourself and ultimately break the bias. Another positive, great message. You see yes. a lot of a lot of these women had to overcome plenty uh, in a time where a lot of women weren't being given opportunities. And the way they're spinning the into into some spinning into something positive now, Demian, for other young women and a lot of them that listens to listen to our show. Um, I want these women to feel like they can do anything. Um, even when I was starting out, it was not easy. Uh, and still to this day, I get memes of washing the dishes in the kitchen sink and all oh sorts, but I can give as good as I get. But Natalie's great. <laughs> I know you're a huge fan of Natalie. Yeah, she's outstanding. And, you know, I was just listening to to a person that divides a lot of uh, opinions and hearts, Mr. Adrian Durham on talk sport yesterday and they were talking about women in football and laura woods winning you know the yeah, sports presenter of the, she's the best you know a, a sports presenter of the year and how somebody tweeted at adrian saying like you know you only won it because you're a woman or something like that and aid went on this rant and i completely agree with him and if the presenter of the year right is getting so much hate and criticism and misogyny and imagine what somebody like you and other people you're still getting that and, and it's just it's just inexcusable i don't understand it I'll, it's irrational behavior and uh it just needs to be uh, you know yeah stamped out definitely 
Um, okay, here we go. I have one more for you right here. And um, by the way, I was um, Pippa. Uh, I, I caught Pippa really late, but um, you know she's she's fantastic, and hopefully we'll get her back on the show. She did a Who Are You with Super Kev, um, mm. but I'm looking forward to getting uh, Pippa on the show and having a, a football conversation with her. I've saved one of my absolute favorites till last. My ambassador of corn um, started talking football with her probably in 2010 uh, when she was a sideline reporter um, going to places like West Brom on a soggy Saturday or Sunday afternoon. Um, and then, of course, uh, was working for ESPN for a while. And now she is our voice of the Premier League here in the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, the one, the only, Rebecca Lowe. Hi, everybody. Happy International Women's Day. Um, I think one of, the, one of the many things that strikes me about the importance of this day is that you and I, everybody listening and watching, we are all fighting this fight, right? So we're still in an age of the first woman to do this, the first woman to do that. And that's still news. And that's brilliant because we're breaking down those barriers and those boundaries and we're bashing those glass ceilings. But my thinking about International Women's Day really is that the next generation are going to be part of the time where we no longer have that, that phrase, the first woman to do this or do that. And so my message on International Women's Day is keep going, keep fighting. This fight right now is the most important fight because we're going to make things better. Things are not moving as quickly as we would like, but we are doing our part and we must continue to do that. So happy International Women's Day. respect to one of the best to ever do it <laughs> she's so good i mean how good is why don't you just tell the people how good she is Demi? i mean she's just it's not that oh she's as good as the you know men she's so much better than anybody regardless of their gender you know race or, she's just outstanding she's eloquent she's intelligent she's sh quick and sharp she has a wonderful sense of humor she knows the game the history of the game mm -hmm. uh she is she's just very well informed and it's not just somebody that reads cue cards and that's it she can have a, a conversation about Crystal Palace and Arsenal and she could have it about Leeds and she could have it about probably Barcelona, Real Madrid and any team in the world. She is just somebody that um, as somebody that lives in America, uh, we could not have asked for a better ambassador to the game and somebody that, uh, you know, when you when she's talking to Lee Dixon or Robbie Musto or whatever, she's just as important as them. And these are professional footballers that have done uh, achieve our dreams. Uh, but Rebecca is doing probably what you and I is our dream, which is to do this more professionally. I mean, you're way ahead of me, but uh, it's just outstanding to see in, in her humility. Same as every every person that that every woman that has appeared here today is just it's it's a common denominator, humility, grace, um, eloquence, intelligence. You know, yeah. it, it's something yeah, that it, she's, it's a feature. It's not a bug. It's a feature among all of you. So she's a rock, she's a rock star. And when I when I met her at the uh, event, when the fan fest came to L.A. at the Coliseum, I mean, she just lights up a room and an air, you know, what you can feel her energy and it's such positive energy. And I just wanted to say a massive thank you to Natalie Sawyer, who is smashing it on TalkSport Breakfast, of course, was on Sky Sports previously. Alison Bender, who does some of the great kind of um, in-depth stories, interviews, covers Chelsea and works for a number of different broadcasters from around the world, a trailblazer in, in, in herself. Um, of course, Leanne Sanderson, thank you so much to someone who's crossed the white lines, as Kev said, plays the game and now is doing it. Um, on a media level as well. And of course, to the great Rebecca Lowe, who has moved even higher and is covering the Olympics. We're talking a position that Bob Costas has right. had, and she does it alongside Mike Tirico here, is becoming the face of the Olympics as well as the Premier League in the United States. And as a fellow Brit, of course, I couldn't be more proud of her. And 
and naturally Super Kevin Campbell, who has been great uh, supporting women along the way in his career and, of course, sits beside me and uh, allows me to vocalize my opinions and accepts them and doesn't patronize in any single way, shape or form whatsoever. Demian, thanks to all those amazing people. Um, she's actually a Crystal Palace fan. Um, someone wrote Norwich City. Christi uh, Christian, uh, she's a Crystal Palace fan. Suraj, that's funny. No wonder she was busy. She wasn't on TV this week. She was uh, wasn't on TV this weekend. <laughs> she was busy. Let's see, Vespa. Okay, fine. And also, one of my favourite women of all time, of course, is Vespa Valentina. And just for Tammy, here you go on International Women's Day. Here's little Vespa Valentina for you, Tammy. Just for you. I love that. Amazing. That's amazing. <laughs> and for me personally, my mum, of course, led the way, showed me what it's like to work hard, be strong, don't take crap from anybody. And my partner, Tony, who's incredibly strong and, um, you know, we're celebrating our 19th anniversary next week. Um, I'm on my 10th year anniversary nice. next weekend. Yes. Nice, my nice. wife, who is my rock and my inspiration and the most badass woman I know. Um, brilliant stuff. Um, happy birthday static to your mum. And yep, our mums are amazing. Mine is too. My parents just celebrated their 66th wow. wedding anniversary. Unbelievable. That, that is insane. Uh, they absolutely. got married when they were like five. <laughs> <laughs> They'll love you forever. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, before we hit the road, Demian, talk yes. us through the women's team, the last result against Birmingham. It was all plain sailing and then it was squeaky bum time for a little bit. <laughs> it was. Of course, Birmingham, four points. The only team they've beaten this season is us. Yes. I was thinking, surely not again. Not um, again, yeah. What's, what's the scoop? What's happening? Uh, how's the table unfolding in the WSL? Well, we are, I believe we have three games in hand. Uh, sorry, Chelsea have three games in hand. Yeah, they so do. Um, so it's, you know, we can assume that they're going to win. If they win all their games, they go, they go above us by one point. But notwithstanding and regardless of that, I'm at a very good place uh, personally and in, in, with a team. And I, anybody that follows me knows I'm Mr. Positive and I'm, the toxic positive guy <laughs> um you know after the five nil you know the games against barcelona i'm like hey you, we can still beat them on the return leg or whatever so i feel very happy i think morale is super high uh there has been a massive shift in our team for those of you that don't know the goat striker uh viviana midema has been playing way deeper and she's basically part of the midfield now and it's been I think it's given a shock to the teams where they don't when they we played against they don't really know how to react and Stina Blackstenius as a number nine has has been f phenomenal. Uh, obviously, Kim Little is doing great. Leah Valti is back to her best. Um, so I just I'm I'm very very excited. The defense with uh, Rafaela Sosa is uh, looking very very strong and very uh, solid. Uh, Leah Williamson is looking, you know, back to her best. So I, I have a very, very good feeling with the current squad, with the current playing, the squad, uh, their attitude. Everybody seems to be super happy and the fan base seems to be much more united. A few months ago, it was a very toxic place to be on sort of Arsenal women Twitter. Uh, there was so much talk about people's personal lives, and it felt like Love Island more than than Arsenal women. Uh, but I feel very, very confident that um, uh, we're going to do well. And actually, uh, the match the, the match on the twenty third against Wolfsburg, which would be the quarterfinals of the Champions League, mm -hmm. uh, a couple of months ago, I would have told you, yeah, I'm not really sure if we're going to beat them, or I might have been afraid of that game, especially with former Gooners, uh, Jill Roard. And of course, Dominic Janssen, the for my money, the best defender on the planet. Uh, you know, uh, but now with the current squad, with with players playing like they're playing, I'm I'm extremely confident. And I would even say that we're gonna win uh, that that tie uh, against um, Wolfsburg and make it to perhaps a semifinal with or against Barcelona. I don't think they're unbeatable either. 
but again, I'm a psychopath and I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, uh, I'm a pathetically uh, optimistic person. So that's one of my flaws. Oh, no way. Yeah. Um, I love your optimism. You're Thank like you. Kev. Kev is always, listen, Kev called like five wins in a row. We've got Lester to go and everyone was saying to him, Kev, what do you, you know, yeah, right. but Come that's, on. he, I think he really believed that we were going to win those games, but you know, the same with you and the women's team, you always believe in them. And I think that's just because we've got this incredible talent that you think on any given day, they can beat any team. Um, I just wanted to read this one from uh, Simons because it's a nice message. Some truly inspirational contributors you've shared with us. We have a long way to go, but here is to strides, tr strides made in the battle of equality. Like I said before, big up women every single day. Well said, yeah. and thanks for your lovely message. Um, Vivian Miedemar just made made record of first play to have a 100 goal contribution in the league. Now, we went through this rocky patch, uh, Demian, and you saying now things are clicking. What do you think? It felt like jo um, Jonas was also, I don't know, he looked like a deer in headlights for just a split second, but it seems like he's pulled it together. Is it the return of Leia? Is it has he tinkered? What what do you think has been the shift into gear back into the positive gear for for the Arsenal? Wow, what a great question! I think I, I have like a hipster answer to that, and it's uh, Leah Valti finding more of her form that was dipping a little bit, maybe through injuries, maybe playing a little bit farther up the pitch. But what I've seen and what I've noticed is that she's playing better. Her passes are more accurate. She's all over the pitch. If that is the sort of, she's like the heartbeat. She's like the thermometer of the team. You know how mm -hmm. she goes, the team goes. So she's doing that well. And something that Jamie mentioned uh, on the chat, I completely agree. Is the the sort of the the parallel to this or the the, the twin reason would be Viviana Miedema dropping deep. Uh, more than anything because she is playing the role of who I think is the smartest footballer I have ever seen in my entire life, uh, which is, who was or is Daniela van de Donk, former Gooner. She played as a number 10. She played all, everywhere. But uh, she's becoming the DVD that we need because goal scoring has never been an issue, really. We have people that can score goals. Uh, but we didn't have that person to unlock the defense and stuff like that. When we were playing with... Frida Manum and Kim Little and 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 Leah Valti, it seemed a little too defensive. Jordan came in here and there and she was doing much better. But something was just magical about Viv dropping deep. And it might have to do with, you know, rewarding a player with, you know, this is where I want to play. This is where I feel is my best. And you're like, well, no, you're a number nine. You're the best to ever do it. Like, why would we change your position? You know, it's like you don't ask Gianluigi Buffon to play as a you know, <laughs> as a false nine, you know, you have him in goal. So, but he might be an outstanding, an outstanding false nine. So, uh, you know, I think, I think there's a, a combination of things happening of good results. Um, and who knows what's happening in, in, in the, the locker room and their personal lives. And people seem to be extremely happy. And Jonas seems to be, I think one thing that I think changed a lot was when he, held himself accountable for mm. some of the results, uh, which I don't know if it would have happened the same thing under Joe Montemuro in, in uh, you know, not that he threw players under the bus, but it's not, it was, he nipped it in the butt. He was like, it's my fault. Of course it's my fault. The way he said it with that confidence, taking so much accountability and responsibility, it was like, oh, Okay, yeah, he that's doesn't really hide, does he? He doesn't. No, he doesn't he hide. Does yeah. So yeah, I yeah. think it's. I think we're we're witnessing something very very special. The transfer policy has been great as well, even though it. Yeah, hurts. I wanted to put the comment up for you from Jamal because he says the January transfer window transformed Arsenal. It allows Miedemar to play deep and Stina and also Souza uh, brings the balance. Um, you mentioned Miedemar playing deeper. The the January transfer windows have have helped haven't they Damien? yeah absolutely i was i i did a twitch stream yesterday and one of the listeners mentioned how souza was uh supposed to be a target in the summer and for problems or with problems or due to problems with the chinese league she couldn't make it in time um so it, it's almost like that vengerism of you know 
somebody coming back from injury is like a new signing, right? That we heard ad nauseum. And uh, this felt that way. Like we kind of heard that she would, she could have signed, but she didn't. And then when she finally did, it was like, wow. And she came right at a time where Jen Beatty was getting a little injured and uh, wasn't at her best. So just things seem to be clicking minus a couple of players. I think that aren't just really pulling her weight. We've spoken about uh, Nikita Paris before, how she just things don't seem to click. I would yeah. personally be surprised if she's in with the squad uh, next season. Um, so it, it, there's just a lot of good things happening. I think in, in uh, I'm fulfilled. I'm, I'm filled with confidence for the next few matches, especially against Wolfsburg. And I say that because Jill Dom and their, their spine, it's very strong, but I think we can attack them from the wing and have that be, especially like set pieces through Steph Catley and all the headers we're scoring. I think we can have that um, as a, as an absolute uh, advantage and I just don't see them scoring that many goals against us if unless it's a free kick or a penalty where Dominic Johnson is going to score them 10 times out of 10, basically. Yeah, and, we, we, we've got Brighton coming up on Sunday, um, Coventry in the FA Cup mm -hmm. uh, quarterfinal, then Wolfsburg, as you mentioned, at the first of two legs. And then on March 26th, it's the North London derby, mm -hmm. um, which was quite the match. Um, first time around, Demian. Yes. I was... That match just made me so mad. Made me made me so mad. But, um, you know, anyway, I, we'll get... We'll, we'll talk about that game a bit yeah. later on. But that's, yeah. that's a massive one right there. And I think for me, I was thinking the other day, I'm like, did they go through their adversity at the right time of the season? Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. You, 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 like Chelsea had a little bit of that bump at the beginning, but they've been on a roll. They've got those three games in hand. We can't, because they win those, they're a point ahead of us. Right. We've got to win all of our games now. There is no room for error, but that North London derby is going to be a tough match. Yeah, and, and we have players like Neville playing out of her mind. She's become a different player. Uh, Vicky Schnatterbeck, our player, she's on mm -hmm. loan. And, and that's a big difference for all of you that are somewhat new to the women's game. This is a huge difference. And I've spoken about this before on a podcast. We have unconditional love for these players as women, as trailblazers. And when you see Vicky Schnatterbeck, somebody that we love, go to Spurs, you're not going to think of her like Saul Campbell. You're not going to think of her as a traitor. There's n those things are not in the in the lingo in the vocabulary of women's football you want to support them and love them and of course I, we want to beat spurs uh but you also want vicky to play well you know we play birmingham and and i love louise quinn i've met her she's a wonderful human being you don't want her to lose four nil four to two but you also want your team to win it's one of those beautiful things about the game and going back to spurs uh you know, they also play against Chelsea, I believe, twice. I might be wrong, but I think twice. So hopefully they'll do as a solid um, in the spirit of all being love and equal and no hate uh, mm -hmm. towards that mob over there. But um, yeah, definitely towards that mob over there. Right. I'm going to get <laughs> you out on a couple of bits here. Um, let's see. There was, yeah, Jamal thinks Nikita Paris will come good. I don't, I don't see it. Um, uh, Matthew is happy that we have Raphael. She's an excellent partner for Leia. Uh, Ask says, um, I think Leia playing in her DM deep position has made the difference. Um, she was playing way up and felt lost. So she's playing deep. Um, again, another in interesting comment. Um, I like how we stepped away from looking at Miedemar for goal scoring. We have so many names to do it for us lately. And by the way, we score some bangers. Mm -hmm. Katie McCabe does not what score normal What is she about? <laughs> she's, she's just on another level. The classiest player at Arsenal club as a whole, probably. She's just on a different level. And we're so lucky to witness these women in our club that we love so much this is these are the invincible type of of, of players katie mckay beth mead viviana midema leah williamson these are historic players historic players that are going to be revered and loved and respected and then years from now if you're not supporting them you're going to look back and you're going to be like wait a second i had the Lionel messi or cristiano ronaldo of 
the women's generation. I had Daniela van der Donk, the Dennis Bergkamp equivalent. I, and we're not, and some people are blind to that. So I know I've said a lot of negative things today, but I just want to end or mention positively and in a positive way how there is a lot of support. There's a lot of people. There's a lot of men that support women. Uh, you hear it on, in the stands, and I'm just so proud. I've seen it. I saw it at Wembley. It was absolutely beautiful to witness. And it's just so, um, um, you know, Mad Real Madrid has all these legends. Barcelona has these legends that have won so much. Arsenal women have won the Champions League. They've won countless leagues, FA Cups, and it's just amazing. It's it's football royalty. So so we must just continue to support them because they deserve it and they earn it and they love it. And this is not a uh, it, it's not an option. It's just very very clear and very easy to do. And the the dividends that will pay is is are immeasurable and unquantifiable because the joy that they bring to our lives minus maybe you and i having to wake up at three in the morning <laughs> i was um, the other game the game against birmingham was so early i was like oh my god it was like a 3 30 a.m wake up call i know um, and i i check out the lineups the, the the hour before and then i check twitter and then it's a mess it's yeah, nice. it was uh, it was crazy, and uh, and yes, Zinzi's engagement. Congratulations! Yes, uh, beautiful story. Yeah, um, definitely. And Don Juan, I can't remember if it was you that mentioned the 108 unbeaten run. You were talking about the first time around. Um, so good that we clarified that yeah. as well. Um, and I tell you, they keep asking Demian. We're going to have to do it one day. Well. I, in my defense, I understand the, <laughs> what I normally use to plug in my instruments. I don't have it right now. And I am not a guitar player. So it would be kind of hard to play like, Hey, I'm a beginner guitar player. This is all for look. So I might have to play some drums yes. or some congas at the right time, but we'll make it, we'll make it happen. I promise you. I tell you, when we win the league, Demian will play whatever you want. Oh That's, my God. Like... <laughs> I'll freaking run naked down Times Square if I have to. Um, e, they're in the they're in the uh, division below. By the way, um, the New uh, Zealand the New Zealand player who scored the hat trick of yes. own goals, um, Michaela. She uh, she plays for Liverpool. Yes, she does, um, and it, it, that is that is exactly what's wrong with yeah football culture. She it, She's it doesn't baller. matter. If Fabio Cannavaro would have done that, nobody would talk about it. Nobody would give. A I don't rat. know. I think there'd be memes all over the place nowadays. <laughs> I mean, but but I mean, but it's all news. Like, who cares? Yeah. It doesn't make her mistakes. Don't make us who we are on on a pitch. Or, you know, it just happens, man. Just let it go, people. Jeez. Yeah, and that too. I mean, teams like Liverpool really need to step it up. Jamal, you're, uh, Jamie, you're right. Um, poor financing, and we're very lucky that. Our club um, does and, and has gotten into the game a little bit more about that. We'll, we'll do a show with Demian on all that stuff uh, next time around. For now, I'm going to have to love you and leave you. Um, Demian, it was absolutely superb having you Thank on you on a day it. like this Thank for me, you. International <laughs> Women's Day. Um, wonderful. Our Arsenal women as well. Uh, we love them. We adore them. Um, they're ballers. They're fighters. And like Emma Hayes said, you know, every day is Women's Day and we love our men too. And we love all those who support um, our uh, our women and, and men like Demian definitely, definitely do that. Uh, some little message there for you from Simons <laughs> on Ronnie. What happened to Ronnie? <laughs> I don't know what that, what that can be. I don't get. know. I don't know. Because you mentioned Ronaldo, I think, oh, earlier. Sorry. But, yeah, 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 yeah. Sure. Listen, Sophie, before I go, I yes. – we talk all the time – and I tell you off camera, in camera, wherever, uh, you are a trailblazer. You are amazing. You're an amazing woman. You are the same as Rebecca Lowe, as Natalie Sawyer, as all these women. You have done such an amazing job, not only for yourself, but the Arsenal club as a whole. And I'm proud to call you a friend. And I'm, call, uh, I'm proud to call you a fellow gooner. And our club is so privileged and lucky to have people like you to do what they do in the manner that they do it and um you know in the in this in the vein of you know don't let people tell you what to do well i'm telling you 
<laughs> that you're amazing and that you can do all these things and i'm just proud to, to to know you and be a part of this and and uh you are one of the reasons why i'm able to talk about arsenal often uh if it weren't for you and back in the hibernian heels days um we i wouldn't have had the um will and the inspiration to have my own arsenal women podcast or my own ar po podcast sports podcast in general so i thank you for that and um i know we're all lucky to have you especially during these times of absolute madness your consistency your 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 love and your inventive nature and and creativity always putting out different kinds of shows and different themes and the way you host the show um I just can't wait to see what the world has in store for you in the future, and um, I'm just excited to, to to be part of it from 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 now on until as long as you allow me to be a part of it. So thank you. <laughs> well, thank you very much. That's very kind, and I have a tremendous amount of respect for you. you. And yes, um, we've been talking football for a long time now, but yeah. more importantly, we've become friends. And to have a friend like you in this world is is just a wonderful thing so thank, thank you, you very very much keep thank smashing you. it as well now you've thank got some you. exciting things coming up and yes we will I do. talk thank about you. them uh with the crew in uh in uh in due course right everybody we will be back in about an hour and 10 minutes um with uh super kevin campbell and the boys from arsenal vision podcast uh elliot uh, and clive will be joining us until then, I will leave you with, at the bottom you've seen, today I'm promoting our talented Guna women. Uh, don't forget Ruth Beckhart. Uh, she has a wonderful collection of art uh, based around the history of Islington and the Arsenal Football Club. You can find her store on Etsy. And if you use um, the promo code, uh, you will get 20% off and it's a lifelong deal. All you have to put in is Highbury Squad. And I will leave you with this video. I will play it again. Francesca Scene. You can check her stuff out at Scene Sketches. She's Arsenal Artwork on Etsy. That's Arsenal Artwork on Etsy. She's painted this incredible mural. And she is working on a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, and doing something special for the Highbury Squad too. So instead of playing the trailer on the outro, I am going to play Francesca's video. Happy International Women's Day. Thank you once again, Demian, for joining us. Mm -hmm. And you can listen on replay, Lone Star Londoner. There's some fantastic messages. Thank you again to Leanne Sanderson, Rebecca Lowe, Natalie Sawyer, Alison Bender, and of course, our very own Super Kevin Campbell. I'm going to go take a little break. I'll have a cup of coffee and I'll see you in an hour and 10 minutes. And don't forget, you can follow Demian right here. And he has a great Twitch show for Arsenal women. Thank you again for sharing your wisdom and knowledge with Thank us. You. Until Thank then, you. guys, I will see you soon. Hi, guys. My name is Fran and I'm an Arsenal fan and professional portrait artist. And Soph has really kindly let me show you guys a massive painting I did of Arsenal legends recently. Um, so I'll show it to you now. Um, we're just in my art studio um, and here is the painting. The painting was done in acrylics and I made sure that all the players had the right kits on with the right sponsors and the right colour reds from their original eras. I'll take you through the painting now. So at the top I've got Thierry Henry and then I painted Wrighty, Aaron Ramsey, Alexis Sanchez, Mark Overmars, Manuel Petit, Robin Van Persie. I've got a larger Patrick Vieira holding one of the Premier League trophies we've won and you can see where I painted Highbury reflected in the trophy and then I've got Dennis Bergkamp at the bottom next to Fabregas and Adams holding the other Prem trophy on the left hand side of the flag. On this side I've also got Freddie Ljungberg, Walcott, Saul Campbell, Aubameyang, Anelka and Robert Pires. So thanks again, so for letting me show off the painting. This is how big it is. Um, it took me about 100 hours because it's so massive and there's so much detail. Um, but I really hope you guys like it. I want to try and see if I can get it out there kind of on Twitter and stuff. So my links are in the description. What I really want is if any of the players that I painted see it. I think that would be the coolest thing. That's the dream. Anyway, thank you again, Soph. I really hope you guys like it. Um, links to buy prints will be in the description and... Yeah, thanks again. Bye, everyone.